Hello dear students, welcome back to the second session of the lesson Babar Ali written by Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma. In our previous session, we discussed the first part of Babar Ali and the author of our lesson Babar Ali is Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma who is the founder of Cover to Cover Writing Studio and she is a creative editor of an online magazine Youth Leader. Youth Leader is an online magazine. And we have also learnt Babar Ali is the youngest headmaster in the world. And Babar Ali was called the youngest headmaster in the world by BBC in the year 2009. As a student, he goes to Kasim Bazar Raj Govinda Sundhari Vidyapit, which is his education institution. He goes to his school and he studies. In fact, he is a class 12 student. And in the afternoon, what does he do? That is what matters. He goes to his school and comes back to his house where he is the headmaster. He runs classes for the deprived students in his family's backyard where more than 800 students do come for the class. They do come to study. Babar Ali, as a student, he teaches for more than 800 students where he is the headmaster. And here in this lesson, for us, Babar Ali has been introduced by Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma, but he is literally introduced to the world by Bangladeshi based youth leader volunteer Tanvir. And we have also studied about his routine. He wakes up early in the morning, he wakes up at 7, and he finishes all the household chores, household works. And in order to reach his school, First, he will have to take an auto rickshaw to a certain place and from there he will have to walk another 5 kilometers to reach his school. He studies, again he comes back, he teaches deprived students, deprived children. So what matters here? Well, Babar Ali was a perfect student. He was an ideal student in the classroom. In fact, he sits in the middle of the front row, front bench. That doesn't matter. Wherever you go, you visit any of the educational institutions, you will see many ideal students. They are studious, they are smart, they are very intelligent. That doesn't matter. What these intelligent, smart students do apart from their studies is what matters. That draws the attention of the world. Here, when most of the students of Babar Ali's age go to playgrounds to play cricket, football and other games, Babar Ali makes his way to his home, to his house, in fact to his school where hundreds of students regularly come to study. So he has helped many deprived children to access to education, to change, to bring out the change in this society, in his place. So this is where we had stopped in our previous session. Let us continue with the lesson. Welcome to Babar Ali School. It is a dilapidated concrete structure covered in off-tone posters. Inside, in a tiny, dank room behind a desk, sits someone even the Queen of England knows by name and you should too. So here, Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma, she welcomes all of us to Babar Ali School. So how is it? Babar Ali School. Where is it? We have already studied that. He runs classes for deprived children in his family's backyard. So the place which is very close to where one lives. So here dilapidated means very bad condition or a building which is in the state of disrepair. A building which is ruined because of the age, because of the negligence. So. Babar Ali school is a dilapidated concrete structure and covered in off-town posters and that particular place, that area where he runs classes for students, where he runs classes for very poor children, that area has been covered by off-town posters. Posters, that area has been covered by scrapped you know, banners, scrapped posters and inside in a tiny Dank room, tiny means very small, very tiny, dank room, dank which means damp, wet, wet room. Inside in a tiny 
dank room behind a desk sits someone even the queen of england knows by name and you should too here she says inside that there is a very small room and dank dank which means wet damp and you can see the lack of light in that particular area in that place that is where he sits sits someone even the queen of england knows by name not only indians even the queen of england knows him by name so you may ask how does queen of england come to know about babar ali so babar ali must have received some kind of recognition by the queen of england by the crown next behind the office is a gate that opens to babar's home so behind the office behind babar ali's office there is a gate that opens for babar ali's home babar ali's house this is where rows of poor underprivileged kids sit under the open blue sky and learn what most children in the modern world pay hundreds of dollars for for free these kids sit in purely air conditioned room so air will come air will go and they where do they sit they sit under the blue sky which means there is no roof for their classrooms there is no roof for babar ali school that is where these poor underprivileged kids sit and study and they sit under the open blue sky and learn what most children in the modern world pay hundreds of dollars for for free these days parents will pay parents are ready to pay lakhs together for their for their kids education so even after paying lakhs together what do they study they study the same what these poor underprivileged kids study in babar's school and that too these kids they study they learn they are being educated for free of cost babar ali is giving entirely free education for these poor kids and next this is where 800 kids who are deprived from their basic right for education walk miles to learn free of cost the basics and fundamentals of life today you must have seen you know students when they go to their schools and colleges even if the schools and colleges are very near to their home very near to their accommodation they don't go by walk they will ask for bikes they will ask for cycles they will ask for you know traveling facilities by the schools and colleges even the schools and colleges are providing traveling facilities to you know bring the children to their school but here these poor kids how do they come to this school to study they come by walk they walk miles together and these 800 kids they are not only from babar ali's village most of the students they do come from the nearby places so they will have to walk a considerable distance to reach the school to study and they walk miles to learn free of cost the basics and fundamentals of life so this education education is one of the basic and fundamentals of our life we must have education so here babar ali is contributing a selfless service to the society in order to bring some changes in the society so let's continue next so let's take a minute over here and think while we whine about our allowances and fuss about staying out late this average boy from a small village is actually helping to make this world a better place today all around the world where millions of children are being deprived from literacy because their families cannot bear the expenses this one school boy from india is trying to change that so here this is the time for us to think this is the time for introspection so what we have to do so we have to think about the present scenario present phenomena so how is it while we whine about our allowances and fuss about staying out late see what do we do what most children do these days they blame their parents whine is nothing but blame a complaint so while we complain or blame our parents for not giving us the enough pocket money while we whine about our allowances and fuss fuss is nothing but showing unnecessary and excessive concern excessive concern about 
staying out late. So we blame and complain about our own parents for not giving us the chance to stay out, for not giving us the enough you know, pocket money. So in this condition, this average boy from a small village, this average boy, who is he? Babar Ali from a very humble background from a small village is actually helping to make this world a better place. So this average boy, what is he doing? He is bringing out some changes. He is transforming the society. He is transforming the nation. How? By providing the education for deprived you know, students, deprived children. So I have already told you in, in my previous session that majority of the students in Murshidabad district depend upon the agriculture. So the standard of living is very poor. They cannot afford the expenses of their kids education. So that is the reason why they don't send their children for schools and schools and colleges. So these kids, these children are deprived of this basic need, deprived of education. So here, boy, Babar Ali is helping to make he is helping those kids to make this world a better place. Today, all around the world where millions of children are being deprived from literacy because their families cannot bear the expenses, this one schoolboy from India is trying to change that. So here we have to think twice. I would like to give you a small data about school robots in India, especially in India. So out of four kids, out of four children, at least one will be the dropout. So according to the survey in the year 2017 in India, 99 million children are out of school and in the world, 264 million children are out of school. So as she says, this is the time for us to think, what are we contributing to the society? What are we you know, doing? What changes are we bringing here? We will study and we will be educated and we go for work and we earn money. That's it. So what are you contributing? Here we have to think at least how many of us could educate someone? We often see children you know, in the street that too deprived, deprived of education. At least can we take someone like that and educate them? Or can we do some help for those kids? We have to think about it. And next, and for this, at the age of 16, Babar Ali is the world's youngest headmaster. So. What contribution is he giving he is very valuable, he is very precious for us. Apart from his studies, he is educating hundreds of deprived kids. And that is why he is at the age of 16, he is the youngest headmaster. You may know, to become a headmaster of an institution, you must have completed your masters, you must have given your service for at least 5 to 10 years. Here, Babar Ali, for the school which he founded, he is the headmaster at the age of mere 16. So let us go to the next paragraph. Babar happens to be one of the fortunate souls in his village. So what is fortunate soul? So Babar Ali in his village he is one of the luckiest boys. He is one of the blessed kids. In the Bhaptan neighborhood of Gangapur village in West Bengal's Murshidabad, Babar lives with his three siblings and his parents in a thatched house which is the size of an average city kitchen. So Babar Ali is from Gangapur village which is in Murshidabad district in West Bengal state and he, this is where Babar Ali lives with his three siblings three siblings, siblings, his own brothers and sisters. He lives with his three siblings and his parents in a thatched house which is the size of an average city kitchen. So Babar Ali's house has a thatched, thatched roof. What is a thatched roof? Thatched is nothing but the roof of the house which is made by the plant materials like hay and the dried coconut leafage. So it's a kind of a hut. That is where Babar Ali lives with his three siblings and his parents, father and mother. And what is the size of their home, size of their house? So Babar Ali and his family lives in a size of an average city kitchen. So next, though they live in a very small house, yet ironically, in a contrast to that, Babar Ali, he is still among the privileged ones in his village because 
Unlike most children there, he went to school and got formal education. He was better off also in being the son of Nasiruddin Sheikh. So, who is his father? Nasiruddin Sheikh. So here, though Babar Ali is from a very humble background, though the family's economical condition is very less, the standard of living is very poor, though they live in a very small house, which is an average size of a city kitchen, his, he still lives among the privileged ones in his village. So who are the privileged ones? Sophisticated families, educated people, fulfilled people. So though he is poor, he lives among the privileged people in his village because he is one of the blessed boys in that village because he is educated and he is educating others. Hundreds of students are being educated by him. That is why he is one of the blessed kids in his village. He is one of the fortunate souls in that village. And he lives, he is still among the privileged one in his village. You know, he is still among the privileged ones in his village because unlike most children there, you know, he is indifferent to other children in his village. He is not like other children because most of the children in his in that particular locality they go for work. They go to different places for work whereas Babar Ali he goes to school. He is being educated and hundreds of other students are being educated by him and he was better off also better off not only as a social reformer not only as a change maker he is good but also as a son he is good. He is as good as a social reformer for his you know, father. He was better off also in being the son of Nasiruddin Sheikh. Nasiruddin is a jute seller and a dropout who believes that education is man's true religion and who initially supported his son's venture with his own income. So here Nasiruddin Sheikh is the father of Babar Ali who believes that Education is the man's true religion. He says, man's true religion is not Hinduism or Islam or Christianity. Man's true religion is education. Here we can understand that how an illiterate person you know, value education, value knowledge. So here knowledge is valued, not the money, not the status, not your prestigious status, but the knowledge. The education has that value. And so Nasiruddin is a Jude seller. So jute is the rough fiber made from the stems of some plant that is used for making rope and other things. And Nasiruddin Sheikh is a jute seller who believes that education is the man's true religion. And he is the one, Nasiruddin Sheikh is the one who initially supported his son's venture with his own income. Already we know that Babar Ali is from a very poor background. So no one was there for Babar Ali to support for the endeavor that he was going to do. Nasiruddin Sheikh, his father is the only one who initially supported Babar Ali in his endeavor. So coming from a privileged family, Babar realized he must do something for the other children in his village. So Babar Ali, he is from a privileged family. Though he has a very humble background, his family is one of the privileged ones. So coming from a privileged family, Babar Ali at a very early age, he thought of contributing something for his village, something for the society. Thus, he has started educating the deprived children in his village. So next, even though children are provided free education, sending children to school is not entirely free of cost. So here in Babar Ali school, especially in Babar Ali school, though Babar Ali is giving free education, education for free of cost for those kids, those deprived children, sending children for, for the parents of these deprived kids, for them, sending children to school is not entirely free of cost. So you might have seen, though some education institutions provide you free education, you will have to spend some money on their uniforms, shoes, books and notebooks and for something else. So sending children to school is not entirely free of cost. If you pay some 10 to 20,000 for school fees, another 10 to 15,000 rupees will have to be paid for their you know, books, uniform, shoes and other things. And although the children are taught for free, they still have to pay for uniforms, books, etc. That is why, that is why a lot of families 
cannot afford to send their children to school. Thus, instead of going to school, most of the boys help out their families by working as mechanics, day laborers, grass cutters, livestock herders, etc. Though their children will get free education in Babar Ali school, parents will have to spend some extra amount on their education for different purposes. That is the reason why most of the parents stop you know, sending their children to schools. They go to different places, they work as you know, mechanics, day laborers, grass cutters, livestock herders, etc. They work as mechanics in some uh, hardware shops, they work as day laborers in different places, they go to you know, agriculture field and they work as grass cutters and they also work as you know, livestock herders. Livestock herder, a person who watches over a group of cows and other pet animals. Boys, they work as mechanics, day laborers, grass cutters and livestock herders whereas girls work as maid servants in the village where they cook, clean, wash clothes and dishes for their employers. Girls, they go to different houses in their own village where they cook, clean, wash clothes for their employers. And Babar Ali wanted to change this. That is why he took the initiative of opening his own very own school. So Babar Ali, as a student, has seen all these things. He was going to school and he was educating there. He could have looked after his own life but he did not do so. When he comes back from the school, he used to notice, he used to see lot many kids, lot many poor kids, poor children are going for work. Babar Ali wanted to change this scenario, wanted to change this. That is the reason why he has started his own school and started giving education for free of cost. And he has started his school and 800 odd students are being educated by Babar Ali. So, what is the name of his school? Who are all the teachers are teaching in his school? Who looks after his school? We'll see in our next session. Thank you.